everybody. How are you tonight? It is so awesome to be here with you tonight. We are so looking forward to having each and every one of you learn and here in our pop-up kitchen tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Marsha Brown and I have the privilege of being the business leader for the most amazing group in all of Tupperware USA and that is Hooray Sales. We have some fantastic folks who are going to be joining us here tonight as well with some great training for you. We're going to be popping all around the place from state to state, um, from North Carolina uh, down to Texas. And so we're going to be sharing lots and lots of great things with you. So we're glad that you're here. Now, you may, if you've never done a StreamYard with us, one of the things that I want to make sure you know is that we're on Facebook. Um, you've got to give StreamYard permission. So there's a little button. It'll like if you, it'll say give StreamYard permission. Just click that so that um, your your comments will be seen. Your name will be seen. We can see them for you as well. Your comments will still be on Facebook, but I won't be able to read them on my side, and that's important because I need to know what's going on, right? So does so does Charlie in the background and everything as well. Now we have one of our amazing managers all the way out in Arizona helping us tonight. Um, and Charlie's going to bring her on. There she is, the, the gorgeous Colleen Helgren. Colleen, we're so glad to have you here working behind scenes with us. Colleen is going to be keeping track of everybody that's on. She's going to be making a list. So here's what you've got to do to help Colleen right now in the comments. And I'll remind you of this again. Be sure to tell us who you are. Tell us who invited you to be here with you tonight. And are you a guest? Or are you a host who's invited your friends to be here with us? Okay. So, you know, if you're a consultant, you're going to say, you know, I'm, I'm Marsha and I'm a consultant. And, that, and, and if you're a guest, you're going to say, I'm Sally and I'm a guest of Colleen. <clears throat> and um, if you're a host, you're going to say, I'm Terry and I'm a host of Marcia. And so that way we'll know who you are and who you who invited you, because, you know, that might mean that there's some special gifts for you and for them when you win. So we got a special drawing we're going to be doing for all of our guests and hosts. We've got a special drawing we're going to do, of course, for everybody that's here on as well. And then you never know, I might get carried away and give away a couple more things. Um, but anyway, we're super glad to have you here. And Colleen's going to go backstage and start going through those lists of people. So make sure that you're telling her that you're here. Once again, don't forget to let us know that you are here by giving StreamYard permission for you to be here. All right. So what is what are we going to talk about tonight here in the kitchen? Well, we're going to talk about something that to me speaks fall. And I know for most people, um, pumpkin spice is what you think about when it comes to fall, right? But for me, I get so excited about apples. You see, apples to me are, you know, they're the fruit of the gods and, and they're just so amazing to have. And, and I don't believe that this is what got them in trouble in the, in, in the Garden of Eden. I think apples are, are a treat for all of us. They're full of nutrition for us. They give us that nice little sweet flavor that we need every now and then, but they're high in, packed in fiber and they have several very important um, antioxidants that help us as well. They, they've been known to help you reduce um, cholesterol and plaque in your arteries. And the old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away is absolutely true. And especially because of some of the um, phytochemicals that are in the skin that are extremely good for your skin and for your insides as well. Now, that being said, I am going to recommend that you always seek out the organic ones in your grocery store. If you happen to have a local orchard you can go to, you're going to have a lot better chance to know that they're not protected with a lot of wax and they have a lot of chem chemicals on them. Um, but in the what they call the dirty dozen. Those are the vegetables and fruits that you probably should always lean towards organic simply because they have less pesticide use on them. Apples are one of those dirty dozen. So I always tend to go with the organics or if it's a local orchard and I know that they are responsible in the way that they grow their things, then I'll buy there as well. Tonight I have two special ones. I have a Fuji and a Gala. Um, those are two of my favorite eating apples. And, um, and they even showed that when, uh, in a study that people who ate an apple a day 
and didn't change anything out in their, in their diet, just added, you know, like ate an apple every day, they actually lost weight. Right. Because it kind of fills you up and it gives you that little extra boost that you need. So tonight we're talking about apples. We're talking about all the things you can do with apples. We are we're going to share with you a couple of recipes with apples. We're going to do something that's one of my favorite things, which is um, it's not a caramel apple we're going to make, but it is the caramel apple flavor. And probably for me, this is my favorite apple treat other than what you're going to learn about tonight as well. So right now I'm going to get you started with one of the things, because we're going to be making an apple turnover or little mini apple pies that you can do. And to do that, of course, you need pie crust. So I'm going to be making a pie crust for you. And, um, and you're going to get a close up look at what we're going to do. So the first thing you're going to need is a bowl. Now it can be, you know, whatever bowl works for you. It can be um, one of our beautiful impressions bowls, which by the way are on sale right now. They work fantastic for this, especially if you use the larger one. Um, you can use your That's a Bowls. I'm using our That's a Junior Bowl, which is actually an exclusive item that you can get free as a Tupperware host. So see, if you're one of those folks who are hosting with us tonight, and you've invited some friends to be here with us, and, and if you are here as a host or even as a guest, it's not too late to go and snag a couple of your friends. Go comment, send them a message, say, hey guys, here, come on over to this place, this, this group that we're in, because you're gonna learn all kinds of cool things about a recipe, some recipes that you can make. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna use my three quart. My, that's a bowl junior, which is a 12 quart capacity. All right, so for this recipe, I am going to need some flour. I'm gonna need salt. I'm gonna need shortening. I'm going to need um, lemon juice. I mean, I'm gonna need ice water and I'm gonna need an egg. And I'll give you all of the capacities. I forgot to put that in my little thing to string for you. So I will post that a little bit later for you as well. So first thing we're gonna do is I am not gonna use my bowl first. I'm actually going to use my supersonic chopper. And you're gonna to get to see the supersonic chopper used a couple of times tonight, so that's really cool. Um, but I'm gonna show you how you can use it to save a lot of time when you are doing something um, like you have to cut shortening into your flour. Okay, because normally you want to have something, you know, you have to use a fork and you have to really get into it. We're gonna use this. This has three blades on it. Um, and they're staggered, and that means so when you use this, you actually are getting the capacity of basically like having worked your dough a hundred times, but you're not going to have that heat added into it as well. So we have our um, chopper here, and then we're going to add to that, I've already pre-measured out three cups of flour. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that flour in there as well. Get it all in there. Now, of course, my flour lives in one of my favorite products. That's our modular mates. Um, and these are so fantastic. If you've never seen modulates, these are the best. These are like what I call Legos for ladies because they stack up on top of each other and they make your cabinets just look gorgeous and organized. Okay, so we've got that in here. We're going to add to this because we're making it th like three pie crust basically with this recipe. We're going to add to this some salt and depending on, you know, because you always need that little bit of salt to balance out the sweetness that you're going to have with your cakes and pie or your pies when we go to make that. So we're going to use a tablespoon of salt and of course I'm using kosher salt. Um, if you are on a, and especially if now if you're using salted butter for this, you would cut back on the salt that you use in this. I'm actually going to use vegetable shortening tonight um, for this. So it's actually a, um, gives you that little bit of a different flavor. And I just realized I left my shortening in the fridge. Let me grab that. Now you might be wondering why would I put it in the fridge? And the reason I put it in the fridge is because it works best if everything's super cold. And so shortening by itself is normally not super cold. So I went ahead and just stuck it. This is just those um, one cup squares of vegetable shortening. And I actually got the um, butter flavor tonight to use with this. You can use um, butter as well. So you would use a cup, which is eight tablespoons or a stick of butter. And we're gonna take and we're gonna add this into our flour and our salt mixture. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it 
into a couple of pieces, just like this, because it'll be easier for it to blend. Put that in there, like this, and like this. So like I said, what this does is it saves you having to cut all that into um, in, in a bowl with a fork and cut it in there. And you want to line up your blades with the top here. And we've got it all together just like this. Okay, let me set this aside. And, and then you want to, I usually give it a little shake and then you're just going to pull. Now the supersonic chopper is so amazing. Um, it does have this rubberized base here so it stays in place and you just pull, pull, pull. One pull is like I said like a hundred chops or a hundred things but you're not getting that heat that would be generated if you're doing this by hand. Give it another little shake, do it a couple more times and basically what you're trying to do is get this to come into kind of what I call like a pebbly look to it um, and so you can probably you see that, see how nice it looks kind of like cornmeal. Um, when you do that. And so it's all pretty much blended in there really nicely. I think I'll give it a shake and do it just a couple more times just to make sure. Um, I like to shake it up good and then more just to make sure it gets blended all the way down to the bottom, right? Because we want that, that uh, shortening off to it. Because that, when the shortening bakes, because um, it's cold and when it's baking, then it will melt and it will create little pockets in the flour and that's what's going to help make your pie crust a little more flaky plus a secret ingredient that i'm going to show you on this recipe that tends to make that happen okay so now that is all ready to go we're going to take our bowl and we are going to pour this back into this all that's going in there okay and the next thing that we're going to do so there you'll see, I've got it all in there. So it's all nice and mixed in there nicely together, ready to go. Okay, we are going to take one egg. So I've got my egg. I'm gonna add that egg right into the center. I'm gonna make a little well right here in the center. Okay, and add that egg right there in the middle. We are going to next add um, some ice water and I'm going to do the ice water last. We're going to do a lemon next because this, this is the kind of cool thing about this recipe. You may have never heard of putting vinegar or lemon juice in your pie crust, but what that does is that acid will react with um, the, the egg that we've put in here and it's going to make it flakier. It's going to give you a flakier pie crust and it makes it easier for it to roll as well and it browns really pretty that way. So I have a lemon that I've cut in half. We need a tablespoon of lemon juice. So probably um, just a half is going to be plenty and I am using our zest and pressed. Now the zest and pressed I'm using is green and we have a, one that's black that is part of a very special offer for our host right now. So if you're liking what this looks like and you're thinking I need one of those, you definitely need to reach out to your Tupperware rep and to ask them about how you can get one um, as part of our Go Go Gadgets um, special that we're offering just to host this month. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, and this is a giant lemon. Let me take the other side because I don't, this one's really, really big. Put it in there. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and juice this right into this bowl so I can measure it out. Okay, but I want you to be able to see this because this is so cool. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to squeeze it. Check how that comes out like that. It just squeezes all that juice down in there, and you literally get so much juice out of it. Now here's another little tip that can help you get more lemon juice out of your lemons because if you will stick, roll it and then stick it in the microwave for about 10 seconds before you cut it and use it, you can usually get about a teaspoon more lemon juice out of your lemons, which is really neat. Okay, now you don't want to um, like bend it up and do it again because the more, you know, if you squeeze it too much, it's going to actually start to release the oils from the skin, from the pith. And, and it gets bitter the, when you get into that white part. But what's so great about this, this particular thing is this, this piece right here, because this is what you can use to do your lemon zest. And while I don't need lemon zest for this, I hate to waste lemon, you know, like the opportunity to get lemon zest. 
So you just kind of grate it on there. This is great for you if you're doing chocolates. It's great for you if you wanted to do some nutmeg. Um, it's great to do ginger. And it's just anything that you need to grate, you can use this for, okay? So what happens is it grates it down in here. You're going to tap it. And when you open it up, you're going to see that it has gone into the inside of it. And I just want to be paying attention to what I do. Take your spoon, and then you can just measure out what you need, just like this. And you have your lemon zest, okay? So that's really cool that you can have that. So now we have our lemon juice, and I'm going to measure out one tablespoon of lemon juice because um, you can use white vinegar or you can use lemon juice. We're using lemon juice. I like the flavor of it. And we're going to add that to the center as well, okay? And now we're going to add our water. And you want to make sure that your water is extra, extra cold. Um, that is, so I've got um, some water that I put ice cubes in it, so it's nice and cold. And it, you start with, I usually start with like four. Um, you can always add more as you go. But I usually start, it's like, it's usually four to five. Um, and not that was three, right? Okay, one more. Four. Okay, so we've got that in there. And I, it's always better to start with too little because you can always add more. Mix up my little egg in there. Okay, I'm just going to give it a round, like a couple of turns around. Okay, and kind of start to get it to mix together. But this is the part that I love about this recipe. And I love to do this with a group because I figure if we do this together, then we all can eat more because we're burning off calories. Now, what do, what, you, what do I mean by that? Okay, so we put this in here. The liquids are all mixed together. I'm going to seal my bowl. Okay, let the little air out. And it's important that you hold it on the sides when you do this because it's going to start to thump around. And you start by just shaking it. And you just shake it a little this way, and you shake it a little that way, and you turn it around, and you just keep shaking. And a lot of times when I'm doing this at home, I just put some music on and I dance around the kitchen while I'm doing it because I figured this way. And see, so once again, if you're holding it and it's sealed, it's not going to, you can turn it up on its side. And what happens is as you do this, it starts to clump together. Now, like I said, I may have to add some more water, but I'd rather start with too little and then add more to it. Okay, so let's just check and see where we're at right now because I'm thinking I need a little more water to it. Um, but as you can see, see how it's all coming together really nicely? Um, it's actually creating my pie crust, just like that, okay? But we're going to add that little bit more water to it. Just put that around the outside. Don't even need to stir it in. I'm just going to seal this back up. And then I'm going to shake, shake, shake. And like I said, what this does is it makes, it will actually make three pie crust. And one of the keys to successful pie crust making is that everything stays ultra cold, which is why your butter or your shortening should be cold. Your ice water should be cold. Your, you know, your egg should be cold so that you can make it all bump together. And this, I can hear it. I'll even give it a little turn around in a circle because guys, check this out. See how it's all come together in like a big ball. And, and now I'm just gonna push it all together and it just easily pulls around the edge. You wanna work it as little as possible with your hands because your hands are warm. And so that's why the shaking is so good. And basically what it does is it forms up a nice big ball of dough. Check that out. How cool is that, right? And so now what I would do is I will go ahead and I'll um, put it out onto a flower, like a slightly floured sheet. I'll, I usually roll it out and cut it into three. So I'll have three pieces, one, two, three. And then um, I can wrap, put these in a bowl, stick them in the fri fridge so they get cold before I want to roll them out. And then I can roll them out with a little bit of just a dusting of butter, I mean, but dusting of flour um, on the bottom and maybe just a little bit on my rolling pin on the top. You always want to use as little butter as possible as you're rolling it out because that is going to give you the flakiest, most amazing pie crust. And right now, you're going to get a chance to learn what to do with that pie crust from one of our incredible folks. So if you want to take this camera off, Charlie, that would be great um, because right now we are going to be bringing on 
one of our incredible directors, who's going to share with you a recipe for how you can use this pie crust to make some special treats for your family. Please welcome all the way from the coast of North Carolina, Jenny Hagler. All hey, right. buddy. Take it away, how Jenny. Hey, how are y'all doing tonight? Super excited. Um, I'm kind of with Marsha on this. I prefer the apples versus like the pumpkin spice, all right? Um, and so when we had one of the, the most amazing products come out this month, I was like, ooh, I have to show y'all how it works. It's not a bowl, y'all. Okay, so first of all, I have the same dough that Marsha did. I just made like a half batch because I don't need a whole lot tonight, all right? So I'm going to put it out on my, my pastry sheet here. I'm not talking about the pastry sheet. I'm just using it to keep my, my counter clean a little bit. Now, I don't want to touch this dough a whole lot because my hands are hot. But what I wanted to show y'all is our rolling pin. Now, what's super cool about our rolling pin is on the end of it, it's actually hollow. So you can put water down in here. And what I did was I actually put water in here and I popped it in the refri into the freezer for about 30 minutes. You don't want to leave it any more than that. Um, because as you know, as water freezes, it expands. But now this rolling pin is super cold. So it's going to keep that butter nice and flaky. I am going to take a little extra flour, put it on top. I'm going to flour my, my rolling pin so I can roll this out. All right, and you want to get this really thin because what we're doing is we're going to make some apple hand pies, okay? And I'll tell you what I did. So I took two Granny Smith apples to make the filling. All right, I took two Granny Smith apples and I peeled them and I cored them and I chopped them up real small. Then I put them into one of our um, Chef Series 2 pans and I kind of sauteed them for a little bit. Speaking of, and then I put a little bit of um, brown sugar with it, some cinnamon, right? Because we want that good fall cinnamon flavor. And because I sauteed and I cooked those apples a little bit, it makes them nice and um, like soft. And it cooked out some of that extra moisture in those apples, all right? So... There we go. I think this is thin enough by the feel of it. Let me go just a little bit more. Okay. So then what I did, because I had fun doing tester recipes. One of the great things about being a Tupperware person, um, we get these great like cooking ideas and stuff. And so we have to test it before we can go live with people. So I was up this morning doing nice testing and everything. If y'all can look, I don't know if I can get this any closer. Um, I probably can't, but I'll show you in a second. You can actually see the, the pieces of shortening that are in there that are still there that's going to make this nice and flaky, okay? And so I've got my filling. This is the filling, right? And I'll show it to you in a second. But I need to make the hand pies. So what I did was I took one of our 16-ounce impression cups. These are on special as well, too. And so I just use these as my cutter, okay? Oop, there we go. And so we can cut a couple of these out. There we go. And honestly, I could probably go a little thinner on this dough. I could have cut the dough in half. There we go. And I'll just do a couple of these. That way I'm not taking up too much of your time tonight. All right. So then I've got, let me see if I can pull it up. Can you all see the like the little chunks of shortening in there? Right? So that's going to make it nice and flaky. So then... I have my, my, my filling. So I've got my apples, I've got my um, brown sugar, I've got ground cinnamon and a little bit of flour, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put probably about a tablespoon or so. And if I was going really fancy, I would get out our portioning scoops and a little less than that, a little less. Just so I make sure that we're not like overstuffing it because then if we overstuff it, they explode and all that jazz. And then that's not cool, right? Just a tad bit more. So probably about a tablespoon. So a tablespoonful. And then we're going to take one of my other ones. I'm going to press them together. Now, here's the thing. Going back to that ice water, you can kind of dip your finger around it. 
and it's going to act and go around that edge and it's going to act like a little bit of glue to seal those edges. And I'm sure Marsha's got some little like tip for us too on sealing these edges. But I'm a hands-on kind of person. So I just really like to pinch them together. Right? And then you can actually do a little crimp. You can do some designs in these if you want. Or you just kind of leave it rustic. Because everybody's like, they do the rustic thing right now. There you go. And so you just kind of pinch, pinch it together to make little pie thingies. So it looks like a pie. There you go. Now, because I cooked some of the moisture out of those apples, I really don't need to, to um, put a little hole in the top of it. Here, I'll make two of these for you. And then you're gonna pop them in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, okay? So they come out nice and golden and brown. And because I said we did tester recipes earlier today, da, 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 I actually have some finished ones. Let me go ahead and seal this one up for you. There we go. Seal it up. Now, if you want, there we go. You could do something special. You can, you can take a fork and you can crimp these together. There we go. Just kind of pinch those together. I don't want to handle this too much because you know what? I don't want that shortening like getting soft and stuff on me. There we go. So I would pop these into the oven for about 15, 20 minutes at that 350 degrees. And when I do that, let me clean my hands up, okay? When I do that, oh, I forgot to tell y'all. I forgot about the egg wash on top, okay? So then what you can do is you can take a little bit of water and an egg and you beat it together. So you make like an egg wash and there we go. You're going to kind of gently and lightly coat the top of these just easily, not very hard, because that, that little egg wash right there is going to give you a very beautiful, like, shiny top to your little hand pies. Now, here's a great little tidbit. If you want to save these for, like, tomorrow go ahead and let these sit out without that egg wash on it. Let them sit out for about 30 minutes or so and dry out a little bit. And then you can put them into a sealed container and cook them up tomorrow, which means come Thanksgiving time, we can give out little hand pies instead of making a giant hand pie. Um, for those of us that are trying to watch our weight, I just watch it go up. Um, or for those people who are diabetic, who can't have a whole lot of sugar, this is a great portion control for them, right? So, but after they've cooked for about 15, 20 minutes in that 350 degree oven, you get the magic of television because we can. But then you can also coat with a little bit of cinnamon and sugar and you get very easy, very nice little apple pie hand pies. I'm gonna break this open just so y'all can see it. And that is your hand pie. And if you want to, you can actually dip this in a caramel dip. And that's gonna be our next recipe. There it goes. And she's on mute. You're muted. Am I still muted? Yeah, yeah, no, you're, well, that, well, don't worry, we'll take care of you, um, Jenny. Okay, so, yes, thank you, Jenny, and guys, you know, let Jenny know what you loved about what you just heard and everything, and I'm coming, I'm going to come down to see her because I want some of those, right? Um, but right now, I want to give something away because remember, I was make, doing those lemons for you guys. I was squeezing lemons, and I had that other half of my lemon, and I always, I hate to be wasteful with anything that I do, so whenever I cut a lemon or when I have, make, I press some lemons and I have more juice than I need for my recipe and maybe I don't want to make lemon juice today then what I like to do is freeze my lemon juice because lemon juice lime juice orange juice all of those are great to freeze and then you can put those um, in a drink that you might be doing you could throw it in your iced tea you could if you've got a bunch of them you can blend them up and make a margarita I mean it's up to you I like them because you know when they they melt they don't dilute whatever it is you're drinking 
And one of the things that I love to use for that is our little mini ice trays. Now these are not currently sold, but um, they're one of my favorite things. I use them not only for, like I said, my lemon juice, my lime juice, um, things like that. I use them if I have leftover tomato sauce. They're perfect for that. They're great for making homemade baby food. Um, it's you know, as fall is coming, I'm going to have to harvest all my herbs that don't winter um, here in the Carolinas. So I'm going to take my basil and I'm going to blend it with some water. And then I'm just going to pour it in here and freeze it. And it'll be perfect for me to throw into soups and stews and stuff all winter long. And so right now I'm going to give one of these away um, to somebody that's on. So um, I'm going to go ahead. If you bring Colleen on um, that. So Colleen, can you give me a winner from some of the folks who have been commenting here today? You've got your list of everybody on I there. What if we just go down and pick the number seventh person on your list? Seventh person on my list is Jessica Mitchell. Jessica Mitchell. All right, Jessica Mitchell, congratulations. You just won our ice tray. Now, Jessica, it's very important that you share your um, address with us so that we can get that out to you because we'd like to do that. And this is also a reminder to everybody that is watching that if you are a guest and we're invited by somebody that you want to make sure that you put in the comments who you are and who invited you. So everybody watching, you got to tell us who you are because that's how Colleen knows that to put you in our drawings. And, and if you are a guest or a host, we need to know that because we have a special drawing coming up at the end just for you. So right now, we're going to go to our next part. We're going to pop over to our next kitchen. We're going to come back to the end, you know, this part of North Carolina, um, right outside of the Charlotte area. And we have another one of our incredible directors, Terry Bird, to share with you how you can make that caramel sauce that you can dip those apple pies into. All right. I need to be a Jenny, so I have the apple pie to, right. to, to spread all this caramel sauce all over. So I'm going to make caramel sauce, guys, and honestly, it only takes, it's less than two minutes. First thing, you're going to melt two tablespoons of butter, which I just did in the microwave, and we're going to add in four tablespoons of brown sugar. Now, I don't know about you, but homemade caramel sauce is so much better than buying the jarred caramel sauce. If you've never made it, um, I'm going to encourage you to make this. And we're going to add in two tablespoons of heavy cream. Now, you see I'm using my Tupper Minis and I used my snack cup so I could have this all prepped and ready to go. Because it makes it easier when you're doing a live demo, guys, if you have your things prepped. Okay, so we're going to stir this together. And we are going to put it in the microwave for 45 seconds. And it already looks amazing. Yeah, I'm using our micro pitcher. It can go in the microwave, guys. It actually has a one cup. That's a two cup. It has a one cup that can go over the top so you don't splatter your butter all over your microwave. Or if you're making something that you it's kind of full and you want to make sure it doesn't splatter all over your microwave, you can put the one cup on top of the two cup this way for splatter proof, which makes it very handy. Now, I will say you want to test your microwave because you may have to adjust how long you put it in your microwave. Obviously, all microwaves are not created equal. Um, some... Some are a lot hotter than others, so you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that and know your microwave. And if you're going to a host house, I'll be honest with them, I tell them. Um, all microwaves are different. This may turn out great, and it always does. But the thing is, you want to make sure that you talk about that because your microwave might be a lot different than mine. So I'm just stirring this. We're not going to add anything to this yet. We're just stirring it to make sure everything's mixed very well, and then we're for 15 seconds. Can you still hear me? Okay, nice and stirred. 15 more seconds and then it will be done. After we have a few more ingredients. So 15 more seconds. But you know, I don't have Jenny's apple pies, so I did cut up some apples so I can, you know, I can't make it and not try it and eat it. Okay. 
Okay. So after you take it out 15 seconds later, we're gonna add in a half a teaspoon of vanilla and a pinch of salt. Okay, the caramel sauce, guys, is done. I'm gonna get closer so you can see it in person. Once it cools, it will thicken. Um, right now, it looks like it's a little bit runny, but this will actually thicken up. But it smells amazing, and it's homemade caramel sauce. Was that simple? Do you not believe you can all do that and make your own caramel sauce and not buy the caramel sauce at the store with all the preservatives? Amazing. Now, who wants to come to my house and have some caramel apples? I'm on the way because there's, like I said, my favorite thing is caramel apples. And, and for like a really sweet, a wonderful treat, that is one of my favorites. Um, and mm -hmm. here's another quick little tip with that, that caramel. Um, you, you can actually cook it a little bit longer and it'll get darker and it'll get thicker and it'll actually set up like almost like a crackle. And then you can actually dip it on your apples and let it get hard on your apples as well. So that's another really fun thing you can do with that. So thank you, Terry, for sharing that with us. I'm super excited um, about all these recipes that we're learning tonight and all your kitchens and sh you're sharing um, with everybody as well. And one of the things that I think is important is to realize why would someone want to have a Tupperware party? So if you're watching us right now and you've been thinking maybe sort of kind of like, you know, should I have a Tupperware party? The answer is, of course, yes, you should. Um, I'm always going to say that because when you're the host, you always get the most. And I shared with you a little bit earlier that, of course, our host can get that fabulous red Batsable Junior as a thank you gift. And it's just one of four options that you have. And your Tupperware rep can share those with you. Um, there's one that's a little Fridge Smart mini set. That's one of my favorites as well. Those are probably my two favorites in the set. But, you know, there's some refrigerator bowls that everybody loves. So you just have to pick the one that's right for you. And that's what I love. There's always choices. So you always get a gift for having your party. You always get a thank you gift when your sales are at least $200. And then the more you sell, the more you get. So at $300, you get $30 in free Tupperware. And you get to go shopping in the catalog for anything that you want. And you get an item for half off. At $500, you reach a really special level because at that level, you qualify for 15% in free products, which is $75. And you can use that $75 for anything in the catalog, or you can shop for one of our exclusive offers. And right now I have in front of me one of our exclusive offers that you can get right now when you host a party of just $500 in sales and two of your dear, sweet, close, wonderful friends decide that they want to get treated special, spoiled rotten and get lots of Tupperware for free too. And they book a party also. So let me just share with you real quickly what this is. This is just one of two that we have available. The other is an amazing 14 piece modular mate set that's only available for two more weeks. Um, I have it displayed over here in the back corner so you can see it. Um, but this set, I just, you have to see it up close because it's so amazing. So it comes with two of our large um, essentials bowls and four of the small essential bowls. These are really nice because they have a special seal. You just press on the top and pull this little, this thick banner up um, or handle up and it pops right off. And so this is a great bowl for your, um, for your caramel sauce to dip your apples in. You can use this if you put your pie in it, pour your applesauce on it, put some ice cream on top of it. You can use it as a popcorn bowl. You can use it as a snack bowl. You can use it as a soup bowl or a cereal bowl. Um, but it's great too, because when you go to seal it up, you just press in the top in the middle and it snaps right on just like that. So all four of these, they will nest inside of each other. They will nest inside of this bowl and this bowl will nest inside of this bowl. So it takes up very little space for you to get this you know, set of six bowls. You also are going to get four of our dessert plates, which once again, we can put those um, nice bigger pies that we just saw from, um, from, from Jenny. And you know, think about guys, the holidays are coming. Um, it's Thanksgiving's going to be here. You're going to have folks over, you're going to have kids over. These can be a perfect size for the kids. These can be a great size for dessert. 
these can be great if you're going to go on a diet between now and the holidays so you can you know lose, eat more then because you lost more before um because they say that psychologically when you eat off of a smaller plate you eat less and then you have the large four dinner plates and these are um just they're, they're our open house collection they're absolutely gorgeous you can't really see but they have this beautiful design around the outside edge and of course they'll look so pretty sitting on the table you know you can have it a salad plate and a dinner plate as well it comes also with our condiment server so this is great for your salad dressings you could have it as a cookout you could put your mayonnaise mustard ketchup um, and chopped onions and things in it you can use it for your uh, gravy during thanksgiving you can use it to put sprinkles in it if you're making um, caramel apples and you want to put sprinkles and stuff on it this is great because you can have those in there and then um, each one of these seals in the individually and the whole thing actually pops apart and stacks inside of itself so it doesn't take up much space in there either but these two guys are so amazing because this is our um, rice server and this is our soup server but they're great for any of your hot vegetables that you want to do they they're a thick wall they'll keep things warm they're pretty to sit on the table and they come with these special serving spoons and they even have a little lip on them so that they sit there and they don't sink down into it so you've got the cover that will cover it up and keep it warm you can use these outside or inside and you get those as well and all of this you get when you host your party of just $500 with two bookings from your party and you get all of it for free along with that thank you gift along with a booking gift and along with um, a two items at half price plus for the next two weeks we have an exclusive offer for our host where you can get five of our gourmet gadgets for an incredible low price that's 75% off retail. So you're gonna to wanna to check in on all of that as well. But right now, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to share with you another recipe, a healthy alternative recipe to um, all these sweets that we've been eating, but it uses our apples also. And it's one of my favorite salsas. It's our orchard salsa. And we're gonna go all the way to Texas for us to get a look at what to do with that. So let me introduce to you our new star manager, Tina Lancaster, on her way to director before the end of this year. Hi, everybody. I don't have a good setup to show my face and my stuff at the same time. So I'm here behind the scenes. The, the uh, orchard salsa is super easy to make, probably one of the easiest things you can make in the supersonic chopper. You, you start with half of a red pepper. And I just seeded it and quartered it out. And then a jalapeno, also seeded. Can you see that okay? And then about a quarter of an onion. It called for a fourth of a cup. So I just put about a quarter of an onion in there. And then three apples. And just put it all in the chopper. Everything in great big chunks. And you put it all in the chopper. Then it calls for the uh, juice of three limes, which I don't have my zest impressed yet. So I had the juice of three limes. And I do have this handy, beautiful piece. It comes with its own measuring spoon. And it wants a half a tablespoon of the Chipotle seasoning mix which I made today and then you put your motor on you got to hold the mouth that's right there we go put your motor on and pull and we still got some going here but I'll show you what it looks like finished. Isn't it pretty? And it's really pretty in our premiere class. So the easiest thing in the world, three small apples, half a bell, red bell pepper, a fourth of a cup of red onion, half a tablespoon of Southwest Chipotle seasoning mix, uh, the juice of three limes. Oh, and I forgot the honey. And I'm going to eyeball the honey and put about 
a teaspoonful of honey in it and then finish it up. And so that's what it looks like. Oh, wow. That is incredible. Tina, thank you so much for that amazing, amazing recipe. Um, as I said, that is one of my personal favorites. And what I love about it is you can you know, vary up the kind of apples that you use in it and you can use it um, both to, with tortilla chips. I like to use the whole grain tortilla chips with that. Or you can also use it. And sometimes I'll just I'll put it on fish, you know, like grilled fish. Um, and actually, sometimes I'll just eat it with a spoon or I'll pour it on top of some yogurt or something like that. So it's a healthy alternative to give me that apple I want, but it has that little bit of spice to it as well. Um, so guys, I hope that you've been learning some really cool stuff. And, and I'm feeling like I need to give something else away before, you know, before I talk about our next topic. Um, so I'm going to bring Colleen back on again. And Colleen's got our list of folks that have been been on here as well. And Colleen, this is going to be one we're going to do for everybody once again. So um, yep. if you will do me a favor, and you've got your list of folks, and if you will give me the seventh person from the bottom, so the seven per seventh person from the bottom of your list, because I have a gift for them. That would be Gwen Teague. Glenn T. Gwen. Gwen. Gwen T. T. Gwen T. Congratulations. Now, once again, you've got to make sure that you give us in the comments, you got to give us your address or you can message Charlie um, with that. Or, or if you're a guest, make sure that your consultant has your address to reach out to me so that I know that also, um, because we're going to send, so we'll have that so we can send it to you. But what are you going to get? You are going to get this very cool little gadget right here. Um, Charlie, maybe if you'll switch it to my little close-up camera, the close-up cam over here. Um, there we go. Okay. Yep. We got that right there. And Charlie, you can take Colleen off, please. Um, and so we've got that. Now, what this is, is a little pie maker, just like you saw, kind of you, instead of a hand one, you don't have to worry about making it by hand, right? Um, and you can take this one off too, Charlie. Take Colleen off. Okay, so I got a, the director is busy talking to people. Um, so what you're going to do with this is you're going to pick your pie crust and you use the back side. Now, I usually, when I use the pie crust, this front side of it has a little star on it and I just push it down just like Jenny did her cups. I use this to make my pieces and then I'll cut the uh, half of them with the one side and half with the other side. You take one of them and put it on here, put your filling in the middle, put your other piece of dough on top crimp it together just like that. Make sure you wet it first, but then crimp it. And then you pop it out and it cuts this little hole. So you got a little steam vent so you can cook your little personal pies. So Gwen, you're gonna be getting one of these. I love, love, love these. It's also not an item that we currently sell, um, which is why it's really good to be a Tupperware rep because then you always know the coolest things when they come out and you always have a chance to get them as well. Um, and what you see in front of me is our starter kit for our brand new reps. And of course, um, one of the things featured right here, you've seen it already tonight. You saw this fantastic supersonic chopper in use twice. And um, we also have our smaller version of it, which goes with, which is perfect for it. And you know, this is the one you can use if you're just doing a little bit, like um, if you just wanted to do a small amount of apples chopped up, maybe if I just want to make a little bit of salsa for myself, it'd be the perfect size. I love to do my onions in this. It's great for that as well. Um, it also comes with this fabulous set of bowls that I shared with you earlier. We do have these featured on special this month with all of our impressions pieces. You're going to want to check that out. It comes with the spatula, which you saw me use earlier as well. It comes with your measuring cups, your measuring spoons. It comes with several of our microwave pieces, our, um, fan, our breakfast on the go, which is fantastic for doing your om omelets or you can do poached eggs. Here's another little quick recipe that you can use this for, for apples, because like I said, I love my apples. You can take your apples and you can do a spiralized apple using our spiralizer um, with our master system, or you can just chop up your apples just like uh, Jenny was sharing with you that she did and and toss it with a little bit of maybe cornstarch, some cinnamon and um, a little brown sugar and you just put it in here and then you make a crumble topping and put on top of it. Stick this in the microwave and you do it in the microwave um, for about three to four minutes 
and it'll cook those apples and you can pour that caramel on top of it and it's absolutely delicious. Um, we have, as I said, we have um, our vent and serve, we have some modular mates, we have fridge smart, we have um, our freezer mates in, in this as well. Um, and it comes with one of our on-the-go tumblers and water bottles. So you get everything that you need to really share with people the excitement of what our Tupperware business is all about, the products that we have, a sampling of all of our products. is over a $400 value that you can get started for just $139. And this month, we even have a bonus for you when you say yes and you place your first order of $40 before the end of the month. You're going to get to add um, a brand new product that we have. I'm going to set this over just because. And guys, this is, if, if you think Tupperware is what Tupperware was, you're in for a big surprise because this is our new Premia glassware. And, and I know somebody mentioned it um, a little bit earlier, but the Premia glass is actually a borosilicate glass, which is a really high density, um, very expensive type of glass that it has temper shock, which means you can take it from a hot oven, put it right here onto this cold granite countertop. You can take it from the freezer, stick it right into the oven, and you're not going to have any of that shattering that you get with um, soda lime glass, which is what Pyrex is made out of, and anchor hocking are made out of. So this is a far superior product. This is actually the same type of glass that they use for beakers and test tubes in chem chemistry fact. Um, chemistry classes. comes. You get two different sizes. Um, you get uh, the larger one, which is one and a half liter, and the smaller one, which is one liter. They have, but what's so neat about them is the seal. And that's right, this seals up. And there's some other things on there. You've seen these locking um, type tops on containers on the market, but none of them do what this one does because it has this silicone um, a ring rim around it that um, is like super flexy and it just fits into this little groove right here and you just press it all the way into that little groove. Now we'll tell you that if you pull it when you go to do it, it's going to stretch and then you're going to go, it doesn't fit. So you just have to be very careful as you push, push it down in there. I always take mine out when I wash it to make sure it's nice and clean. There's no food up inside of it. Let it dry and then I just stick it back in here. I do this all the time. You always want to store it when it's without the cover on it, but when it's time to use it, I mean, when it's empty, and you go to put it in the fridge or the freezer, because it will go in the freezer, you place it on, you do the side first, so lock both of your sides first, get those on, and then you turn it and you lock both the ends. And so now it's locked. And there is nothing that can pour out of that, because not only is it an, an air you know, an air overlocking seal, it also has that silicone valve that adjusts to fit it. So it keeps it nice and airtight, nice and liquid tight. It even makes it perfect so when you freeze in it, it's not going to come off as well. You've got two different sizes of these. As I said, these are going to be perfect when you get ready to open them. Open the end ones first, then open the sides, and it comes right off. And you're going to have a chance to add this to your collection for an exclusive price when you say yes to joining us in Tupperware. So we are coming to the end of our evening. We hope that you've learned something. In fact, I would love to see in the comments right now what's something that you've learned tonight that you're really excited about, something that you're going to be doing maybe with what you've learned, um, or, or maybe you have any questions you might have for us about like what we're doing, why we do what we do. Because not only can you get started in Tupperware and get this fantastic kit, but you also have the opportunity to shop at a discount as well. And just think about how easy it would be to share with your friends the things that Tupperware does. How many of you have already seen something that you think you would love to have in your kitchen that you don't have? How many of you, even our consultants, how many of you have seen a product that you, got, you went, oh my gosh, I need that in my kitchen, right? And if you're a guest with us, you might be thinking, well, how can I afford all of that? Well, as a Tupperware wrap, you get the best price because you get 25% off everything that we have all the time. What's even more exciting is when something's on sale and you decide you want that, you get 25% off the sale price. So that means you save even more as well. And what's even more exciting is when you share it with your friends and family and they purchase, you make 
25%. So if your friend decides to shop and buy our fabulous um, chopper from you, then that's you, you've just put $25, $35 in your pocket. If somebody decides to organize their cabins with our modular mates and they have a party for $500, a $500 party, you're going to have put $125 in your pocket. And here's the thing. You'll never know what you can do with it until you try. So one of the things that I want to challenge you, if you are here visiting with us tonight, is to give it a try. Reach out to your rep and say, you know what? I don't know if I want to stay, you know, sell Tupperware for a long time. I don't even know if I can sell Tupperware, but I'm willing to give it a try because there's things that I want to buy. And if you don't see the value of getting this $450 of the Tupperware for $139, you can always open an account as one of our VIP shoppers for $15 and you can buy the things that you want at 25% off. But here's the other thing. If you give it a try, you might discover that it really works for you and you'll learn great things because what you just saw tonight, our pop-up kitchen, is something that we do all the time. And you don't have to be the one doing the demonstrating. You just invite your friends, just like you are invited, to be here and watch what we do. And from that, you, they're gonna, your friends are going to see what's going on. They're going to see the products. They're going to get excited. And they're going to order from you. So you make the money while we help you by doing the work. And then as you get better, because Tina, Tina that you know, shared with us tonight, I will tell you, Tina started back in February just because she had Tupperware she wanted to buy. She had no intention of selling. She had no interest in any of that. She just wanted to be able to get some products at the best price. Well, it didn't take long for she realized how easy it was to make some extra money while she was doing it. And now, as I said, she's gone from, consult from new consultant to consultant who's qualified for an assortment of fantastic free products worth over $3,000. She's earned more products. She's gotten another promotion to manager and then another promotion to star manager. She's working on her next promotion and by the end of this year working towards being a director. So you see great things can happen if you give it a try. So I want to challenge you to do that and I do have a special bonus offer for everybody who says yes tonight. So if you're a guest and you're watching reach out to the person you invited you and say, I'm willing to give it a try because we're getting ready to go into our top selling season. This is a great time to open an account. There's going to be new products. In fact, we have sampling going on right now. If you opened an account today, you would be able to actually buy some products that are coming out in October today for 35% off. That's right. You'd save even more. And some of those products are on sale. You also will have an opportunity um, to qualify for some, this premium glass. And by doing it tonight and saying yes and going ahead and open your account, then I am going to be sending you a, what I call my, my goodie bag surprise, my su surprise goodie bag. Um, and it's a bag of Tupperware products with lots of things that you can use to add to your collection, things that you can put in your kitchen, things that you can use as little gifts maybe to offer to a friend who hosts your first party for you. And it's just my way of saying thank you for considering giving us a try. It might even include one of those little ice trays that I showed you earlier. But right now I have a gift to give away to somebody who is here as a guest, as a guest with us. See, once again, this is another reason why it's great for you to invite your friends um, you know, to join the, join us when we're on here because they can get exclusive gifts. So I'm going to bring Colleen back and she's going to um, get her list of all of our guests that are on tonight. Um, and Colleen, um, how many guests do we have on? All right, five, you're, you're muted. How many is it? We have four on. Four on. Okay, so let me... Um, Charlie, if you can pick that lucky number over there, he's going to pick the lucky number. It's lucky number two because everything's better in pairs. So number two is Sylvia Pratt. Sylvia Pratt. Pratt. Sylvia Pratt. Congratulations. And she was invited by whom? Donna Jo. By Donna Jo. So Sylvia Pratt, congratulations. We hope you've learned a few things. You are going to get one of my favorite things in the kitchen. It is our all-in-one shaker and all-in-one mate. This is like one of my favorite, favorite things. It's a little, a little container 
that has an egg separator, it has a grater, and it has a juicer all in it. And um, all of the inserts for the little the all-in-one mate also fit on top of the all-in-one shaker. So this is perfect if you're making um, lemon meringue, if you're making salad dressing, you can grate your, your lemon rind into it, mix it with your eggs, you can do juice your lemons into it. If you're making home scrambled eggs, you can do your eggs and, and mix it in here as well. So it all comes together. It's a fantastic gift and it's yours because you joined us tonight. So guys, don't miss out on our next pop-up kitchen. We've got another one coming in three weeks. Um, be sure that you tell your rep that you want to be invited or better yet, host a party and invite all your friends to be a part of it with us as well. So I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. And, um, and we'll say, Happy trails. Now, what do we say with apples? You know, hope you know, hope you had an appetizing th time with us tonight, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everybody.